Uh, so, hi guys, it's been really wonderful since the morning and I think we have heard a lot of serious mathematical topics and it was amazing. So, this is the last talk of this workshop and I just uh, don't want to bore you guys with a lot of mathematical stuff, just some good stories, good stories from the popular maths to cherish about and probably uh, we can interact because I guess all of you knows these stories. So, we can just have some fun moments all together. So this is the uh, title of the uh, of my talk. I just want to dive deep into the fascinating popular math stories that probably we all know and a little application of it. So uh, a few uh, days back, I found this amazing machine learning algorithm called uh, the estimating the maximum. And it is a very, very, very newly developed algorithm which is not yet uh, very much popularized because uh, just published uh, the one university of australia published only one paper about it i found it in the literature got really interested about it and just went on to find some back stories about it and i found the root lies in very popular uh, stories which we all have heard from childhood so um in this talk you'll be having you know you'll be listening to very popular mathematicians like george Cantor and kurt Gödel. but uh, let's talk up first about the person whom no one recognizes that is me and <laughs> so here is a backstory about me. When I was in my intermediate school, I found this really interesting book. Okay, it's somehow not working. Yeah, so this really, really interesting book called uh, called One to Three Infinity by one of my favorite popular science writer, George Gamow. You can check out his different books. And George Gamow had this really uh, unique approach towards infinity. Now, uh, you know, as uh, children, we all were this, uh, into this fancy concept of infinity. We have, uh, you know, watched numerous number of videos and popular science books. So how George Gamow approaches infinity is, he is, uh, in, the, in the first page of this book, he's introducing us to a tribe. Now, the tribe only knows how to count up to three. They just know one, two, three. That's it. They cannot count more than three. Now, uh, what George Camo is saying that what is our concept of infinity? Infinity, as we conventionally say, is a, probably a very large amount which you cannot say, which you cannot write. Like we cannot imagine anything apart from our imagination. This is infinity. It may be very big. It may be very small. Like in the microns, we cannot define it. It is beyond our imagination. So, uh, to that tribe, which cannot, which can count up to one, two, three, that only they can count. So, anything apart, uh, like uh, bigger than three, four, five, seven, that is infinity to them. Okay. Now, uh, now George Camo gives us this very nice argument comparing infinity. Uh, he is calling it as the number of all numbers, like the supreme, and he compares it as the number of all geometrical points on a line. Makes sense, right? the for all the points in a geometrical line that is uh, infinity like in our conventional way now he asked let's compare among them and decide which one is larger now how can it make sense right like infinity is uh, infinite it is uncountable like you have one infinity you have other how can it be we can c compare which one is larger it is large that's it we cannot imagine beyond that so the argument goes like this he says suppose the tribe which can count only up to three they have two boxes. In one box, they have balls, and in one box, they have coins. Now they can count one, two, three. That's it. So, what uh, algorithm they can use is they can count one ball, two ball, three ball. Okay. One coin, two coin, three coin. That's it. Now they can see if there is more coins left or there is more balls left in the bucket, like their usual notion. And then they can, now anything apart from three is infinity to them. Uh, so they can compare it like that, that uh, suppose there is more balls than the coins. So they can say that this set of infinity is larger than this set of infinity. But um, this very handsome fellow here, George uh, Cantor, a very uh, important personality in mathematics, he did was, he used the same algorithm while defining his nice set theory. He said that infinities are infinities. But some infinities are bigger than others. Till George Cantor, people used to believe that infinity is uncountable. Now, this handsome dude comes into play. 
and he says that no it is countable you can actually compare which is bigger and which is smaller so what he says what uh, george cantor says he says that suppose you have an algorithm where uh, there is the set of all the even numbers the set of all the odd numbers and the set of all the real numbers including both odd even rational irrational transcendental whatever now which one is bigger the set of all numbers or only the set of even or odd numbers can you just tell me which one do you feel is the set of all numbers that is our basic notion right because all of it comprises into it yeah that's how we can define it but here comes another question so yeah that is the same question that uh, if it is a uh, same or not but george cantor came up with this very 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 important statement in uh, logical mathematics that in the world of infinity a part may be equal to the whole that is what he is saying that the set of infinite or uh, like all the numbers together may be equal to the even only the set of only the even numbers and the odd numbers and how can we do it let's not talk about the proof let's visualize it so uh, here is a great visualization by uh, which is called hilbert's grand hotel paradox or uh, infinite hotel paradox there is a very good tedx video about it you can watch it what does it say it says suppose there is a hotel so in this hotel there are infinite number of rooms infinite number of rooms and all the rooms are full every room is accommodated with a guest now one new guy appears here and he is saying hello manager i need a new room but all the rooms are full but the manager says no wait we have a room for you how what he does is because it's a hotel with infinite number of rooms he sees the person in room 1 can you please shift to the room 2 he asks the room 2 can you please shift to the room 3 and it goes on infinite loop and the first room is vacated for the new customer right now i am not satisfied with this again suppose um, another infinite number of people appears infinite number of guests appears they all ask okay you gave the previous one a room we also need a room what does he the manager does is he asks the room number 1 to shift to room number 2 he asks the room number 2 to shift to room number 4 the room number 3 to room number 6 and thus all the even number of rooms get vacated so now we know that the set of even numbers is infinite so we have infinite number of vacated rooms where the guests can stay now i am not still satisfied here i have another questions but what if an infinite number of buses arrives with infinite number of guests bus number 1 has infinite number of guests bus number 2 has infinite number of guests bus number 3 has infinite number of guests and so on what do you do so the manager says we we have a plan for that also now here the prime numbers come into play prime numbers are very important in mathematics they can give you a fields medal they can give you an able medal so we know that the set of all prime numbers is countably infinite how do we prove it there was a very good guy named euclid in uh, ancient greece he proved it there is a very uh, famous proof he says that uh, suppose there are only n numbers of finite primes so we know from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that every number is a composition of uh, prime numbers like if you break down all the numbers there like primes are the building blocks of that number so it's called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic so suppose n is defined as uh these are all primes so suppose n is defined as the multiplication of uh, p1 p2 up to pn and that is the last prime we know prime is finite that is the maximum prime we know now euclid introduces another number called n prime which is p1 p2 dot 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 pn plus 1 now from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic we already know that prime numbers are building blocks of every number so there should be some prime which divides this um, n prime 
but all the primes that we already know because prime is finite we have assumed all the primes we know p1 p2 up to pn they are already occupied by n so this n prime is a new number and it is also a prime because no known prime is dividing it so this n prime is our new prime thus we can prove by the theory of induction that prime number is infinite and if you uh, investigate more into it you'll get to know that uh, there are very very beautiful like heavenly proofs of different uh, forms of prime like primes of the form 6 minus 1 primes of the form 4 in plus 1 like there are infinite number of primes of this forms it is very popular in olympiad maths okay now all right here is a, a paper uh, like a doi the doi you can uh, search in research plate or sci hub this paper i would suggest everyone to read uh, and you don't need any like uh, prerequisite to read this paper it is uh, talking about the application of whatever we have discussed right the countability of infinite like if infinite is countable or not so this paper is telling that uh, because we know that infinite uh, this thing is countable we can have uh, you know amazing applications in quantitative finance so it is very um, it's an amazing paper. These are some uh, basic boring uh, definitions, which I think I'll just skip because of the time frame. Now let's talk about George Cantor's, um, you know, his, uh, what do you say, contributions. So there is a very, like, uh, this is a very uh, popular Medium channel. There is a social site called Medium. And there is a very popular channel named uh, Cantor's Paradise. You guys can check it out. It's uh, amazing. So uh, let's talk what Cantor did. So there is a very uh, famous story regarding George Cantor. It was believed before Cantor came into play, there was this uh, famous, uh, you know, the king of mathematics, uh, Gauss. He gave a warning that uh, don't think of infinity too much. It is not real. <laughs> it is something, you know, don't think about it. You will, uh, you know, lose the basic logic and foundations of mathematics. Don't think about it way too much. But uh, before uh, George Cantor, there was this taboo for infinity everyone thought it is something unimaginable after uh Cantor came into play all, also Bolzano uh, Ryman they also uh, gave some uh, very good contribution in it so after he came into play he uh, derived this uh very nice set theory called nice set theory so there are two kinds of set theory one is axiomatic set theory that deals with boring uh, not boring but uh interesting proofs and uh, proper theorems with uh, notations and everything but Cantor's naive set theory just deals with uh, very basic logic. He defines everything in natural language, just as I'm defining, like that. So probably you can check it out. Um, but during the, you know, 1900 to 1930, there was this confusion gathering around that if set theory is actually applicable to the whole field of mathematics, like people used to think that it is only something that we can uh, apply in analysis real analysis calculus and topology that's it but uh, here comes our next hero that is kurt godel and uh, and also Cantor, and they made this contribution in uh, coming you know set theory bringing set theory into pure maths so godel sir comes into play godel kurt godel is usually said uh, if you search on google or youtube he's usually usually he's called the man who broke maths because they broke the whole foundation of maths. How? He said that there is a very big loophole in the foundation and the philosophy of mathematics itself. The logic of maths is uh, standing on a very big loophole. And why is that? Okay. Uh, before we go into the formal definition of Gordel's incompleteness theorem, let us, uh, let us see this very funny paradox, which probably you have seen earlier. It says the blue statement is false. So can you tell me if the statement is true or false? So if the statement is true, so if the statement is false, then it is true. Because the statement says the statement is false. So if it is false, it, it is true. And if it is true, then it is false. So here comes a paradox in basic in the foundation of mathematics. Before Gordel, before Kurt Gordel, mathematicians has this notion that a theory or a statement can either be true or be false. There is no gray matter, there is no middle ground, either true or false. Kurt Gordel took birth. 
then he said that uh, this statement he he thought a lot what his research process included is he uh, broke every equation and inequation suppose you have this equation you have this inequation he broke everything into code like he broke every equation into numbers and then he suddenly came into one paper which shook the world of mathematicians he said that this statement cannot be proved he just wrote this statement this statement cannot be proved so the mathematicians used to believe that either the statement will be true or will be false so if the statement is false it will have a proof right it will have a proof now in mathematics if a statement has a proof then it is true and if the statement is true then this statement cannot be proved so there is this building blocks in mathematics which we called axioms axioms are the building blocks of mathematics like 2 plus 2 will be 4 3 plus 2 will be 5 that are the building blocks so this whole building blocks falls apart because now we know that there are some middle grounds all right let's move on yeah this is the formal uh, statement of godel's incompleteness theorem which states that there are mathematical statements that are true but not not formally provable so it is applicable in real life uh, you know like there are numerous application of it uh, in statistics also so suppose you have a box in this box you have thrown some logics some axioms that these are the building blocks there will always be some logic or theorem in that which you know is true but you cannot prove it prove it with the logics that is already existing in this block right so that is what godel says now there is there comes my favorite puzzle of <laughs> mathematics okay so suppose we are assuming there is an island oh my god how bad am i at drawing so there is this island and suppose this island name is bs degree so one day uh, a guy suppose the guy shojit sh okay he comes into this island bs degree so here he can see that there are two kinds of tribes two kinds of people in this island one we call athenians one we call feudonians these are names given by uh, god and not me so um there are some properties in this uh, island listen very carefully athenians only speak truth and feudonians only speak false okay now shuvajitta comes into this island okay and he found shuvashista okay and he asks he want to know that he is meeting the person shuvash shuvashista he wants to know if he is athenian or feudonian or neither sorry here is a mistake or neither like just an outsider like him he wants to know that how would he know what logical question he should ask such that he knows if he is athenian or feudonian there is one catch in this story there is one condition that athenians who always speak the truth they always keep the directory like they have a dictionary of people of the name of the people who belongs to their tribe who are athenians they have the names now he has only one question to ask he can ask only one question and the answer is only one and he uh, is supposed to know if the person is athenian or feudonian okay he is asking the question now shivash is the is answering that you will never have concrete evidence that confirms i am an athenian that is his answer and he got his answer he suddenly shubhajit the knew that shubhajit the is neither athenian nor feudonian he is just an outside now we will see how so and we will see the correlation with the godel's incompleteness theorem so he says that um, there is no concrete evidence that i am an athenian so if he was an athenian he always speaks the truth now they always keep the directory where the names will be there of the athenian so there will always be proof that he is athenian so he is not an athenian if he is a pseudonian
yeah if he is a pseudonian that then why would you say that uh, you know there will be you won't find any concrete evidence that i am an athenian so he will be a pseudonian because there is no concrete ev evidence but pseudonians always pick faults so he is not an pseudonian he is a he is made right but here comes the uh, godel's incompleteness theorem that is you always can define logically logically by words you can say but there is no concrete proof that you are an outsider why is not there are some man made situation which is very funny actually how godel uh, took the argument he said that uh, suppose uh, that outsider is coming to ask me if i am an athenian or pseudonian it is possible that uh, probably he is the first person i am he is meeting and i am also an outsider right i don't know about the rules or when i am answering him the par person just you know some thunder strikes and the person dies so <laughs> there is no concrete proof like uh, logic is not based on this real life scenarios so yeah that's it and uh, today the godelian puzzle this puzzle of athenian and pseudonian is called the godelian puzzle it is uh, celebrated as a unesco's world logic day as kurt, kurt Go godel defined the logic he broke the foundation of mathematics on january 14 i wish you'd have some celebration on that day as well <laughs> from this people of this workshop so that was the day when godel died now comes to the machine learning algorithm the estimating the maximum so this uh, ai and ml engineers like uh, of today's era they came up with this question does machine learning share the same fate of math mathematical unsolvability what is mathematical unsolvability the way i am i have stated the godel's incompleteness theorem that there will be always some things that you cannot prove from the set of axioms right so is it so that machine learning is also walking on that path is there some loopholes in the foundation of machine learning as well so here is this view i of this paper you can just uh, take a screenshot check out this paper this is the only paper that has been published not many days before on this topic and it is a ground breaking research on machine learning so the researchers i'm not going to uh, tell all the stories just uh, very um, in a very you know uh, precise manner the algorithm is called estimating the maxim maximum and what the researchers have uh, proved is they have came with some functions which you can never prove with the conventional machine learning algorithms or conventional mathematics and they have given the example of this functions so what they are saying is that uh, the incompleteness theorem also applies in machine learning that uh, there are some unsolvability some functions are there some algorithms are there which you can never solve isn't it fascinating so yeah that's it i hope uh, we can walk on the path of this famous mathematician and come up with something good for the foundation of ai ml and data science and yeah that's it from me ma'am uh, can i have this pdf madam because the, the link is un, uh, not accessible madam okay what you can do is you can copy this uh, number here because uh, the links are uh, they are a, a bit illegal i, re like I require no, no i required for access okay not this madam you were you this pdf links are given I'll share with you we share you, sir okay sir okay thank you okay. any other questions no, madam thank you it is very interesting thank you so much so can we end here okay there are some i have one question ma'am yes uh, ma'am uh, this uh, unsolvability yes. uh, in the machine learning yes. uh, what do you think uh, uh, what is the repercussion of that that means uh, uh, what will be that your uh, uh, future like or machine learning what does it uh, achieve or so what do you think we can uh, take, i think there are the applications i mean yes sorry where are these applications i mean specifically yeah so uh, if you ask for the application i think uh, okay let's take this uh, this uh, example suppose you are uh, you, uh, have you completed stats 2 uh, yes ma'am okay so suppose our significance level is less than 0.5 you reject the null hypothesis right ah uh, yes yes 
So this will give us some uh, intuitions about what to, for which algorithms, which functions to reject and which to not. Okay, ma'am. Okay. And, and another that, way is, that, uh, but I feel is we can just work on the footprints of mathematics, pure mathematics, and uh, we have seen fine. that uh, even though there is this Gödel's incompleteness theorem, we can walk on different paths and we can actually prove theorems. We can build some new building blocks, new axioms. Yes. So yes. Yeah, definitely we can come up with some new axioms and try to prove that. Uh, please check out this paper. I would encourage everyone to check out this paper and uh, see the functions. If we can come up with some good foundation, good axioms to prove this algorithms. Okay, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks. Hello. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Megha.